Next, we are going to edit an existing expense and save the changed expense to the persistence store. We are going to use the same view controller that we used to actually create a new expense, which would be our single expense view controller. This is the same view controller used to create one, and this is going to be the same one to edit. So at the very top of single expense view controller, let's create a new variable, which will hold our existing expense. And this is going to be of type expense optional. The reason behind this optional is if existing expense actually exists, we'll edit that existing expense. If existing expense is nil, that means we should create the new expense. So if we have an existing expense passed in to this view controller, we should initialize our UI elements according to the existing information. So in our view did load, let us set some of these properties. So name text field dot text is equal to existing expense dot name. Right now existing expense is optional and we're passing the t name to our text field. The reason behind the fact that we can do this is text is actually an optional string. And so if our existing expense does not exist, we're gonna pass it in nil and it's gonna start with the blank text field, which is exactly what we want no matter what. Next, we need to do our amount text field. Amount text field dot text equals existing expense dot amount and now we have a new problem if amount is optional amount is a double and it is not optional so we actually need to do some checking before we assign this to our text field because we don't want to actually assign a double or an optional double to the text we want it to be appear like a string and be blank if the amount does not exist so let's unwrap our amount if let amount equals existing expense dot amount and let's set amount text fields text equal to a string and using string interpolation pass in our unwrapped amount if amount does not exist so else let's set our amount text field dot text equal to an empty string and in all reality, we don't even need to actually do that else statement because if it is existing expense does not exist, the amount text field will actually be blank anyway, so we can simply delete that portion. Now we need to set our date pickers, date, and again we have to actually unwrap our existing expenses date. So if let date equals existing expense dot date. And now let's set our date pickers date equal to date. Now that we've initialized all of our UI elements with the starting values of our existing expense, if our existing expense exists, let's actually now save this expense and save those changes if the user has changed anything. This will actually be done in our save expense, just like saving a new expense. Dale, how should we go about this? Well, first we want to check to see if we have an existing expense. If we do, we're going to update its properties. Otherwise, we're going to create an expense. Perfect. So let's create a storage to store the expense, whether it be a new expense or an existing expense that we actually want to save. So var expense is of type expense, and this should be optional. Now we need to check if our existing expense exists and modify those properties if it does. So let's unwrap our existing expense equals existing expense. And here's our opportunity to modify the properties of our existing expense before we save it. So existing expense dot name equals name. Existing expense dot amount equals amount and existing expense dot date equals date. Now that we've done, modified our properties, let's actually assign our existing expense to the expense that we want to save by saying expense equals existing expense. Now, if existing expense does not exist, that means we need to create a new expense. 
and we should do that in our else clause for this if let else and again we need to save this new expense to this expense here because this expense here is the one we're going to save so let's access that expense and create a new instance of our expense that takes in the name amount and date now that we have that we need to actually save this expense so in this if let expense this is the same one we used originally to create a new expense change our initializer to create a new expense to the one that we actually want to save so let's walk through this code one more time we have a variable expense this is the expense that could be have been edited or could be a new expense but ultimately this is the expense that we're saving if existing expense exists we're modifying the properties and assigning the existing expense to the one we want to save if existing expense does not exist that means we should create a new expense and we're going to assign that to the one that we want to save and ultimately if the expense exists that we want to save whether it be edited or new we are going to unwrap that get its managed context and save our managed context and if that was successful pop it from our view controller so now when i build and run and maybe i don't want to wait for the iphone 25 maybe i should just get the iphone 10 and it didn't work. Dale, I know what happened, and it has a feeling it has to do with expenses view controller. What do you think? So we haven't passed the expense from the view controller that has the table view to this single expense view controller. So let's go back to our expenses view controller, and we need to implement a new function, that function prepare for segue. Prepare for segue. This function is called when it's preparing to actually segue to a different view controller. So here's our opportunity to get the destination of the segue and to set properties on that destination view controller. So let's do a guard statement. Guard let destination equals segue dot destination. And notice the type of destination. It's simply of a UI view controller. So we'll ultimately need to cast that into a single expense view controller. Now that we have our destination, we also need to get the selected row from our table view. So let's create another guard let, and this will be selected row equals self dot expenses table view dot index path for selected row. And if this does not occur, let's do an else simply return. Now that we have the, both the destination and the selected row of our table view, let's get our expense and assign that expense to our destination's existing expense. So destination.existing expense equals expenses selected row. And I have an error because selected row um, is actually of type index path right now. So let's change index path for selected row and let's get its row property. Now that we do that, we can build and run our application. And again, I'm gonna change our iPhone 25 because we don't wanna wait that long to an iPhone 10 by selecting it. Notice all fields have been initialized with what it was originally set in that expense. And I can change a property from an iPhone 25 to an iPhone 10, click save, and notice it updates on our expenses view controller as well.